Father God, we thank you so much for this time that you have given us to come into your presence, Father God. We pray that you come and fill this place with your presence as we worship you. Holy Spirit, come and take control of this session, Father God. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Fill us with your presence so that as we praise and worship our Father in heaven, that he will sit enthroned upon our praises, that our praises will be like sweet incense to him. Father God, we submit our viewers into your hands. Touch them and fill them with your presence. Let this meeting be a changing point in their lives, Father God. Come and fill us and come and fill this place. Let all glory and honor be unto your name alone. In Jesus' name we pray.
Praise the Lord. It is such an honor and it is such a privilege for us to praise and worship our Almighty God. Moses was born in an unfavorable circumstance. Um, when he was born um, at that time in Egypt, um, the Pharaoh had given instructions for all the children below the age of two to be killed. Um, despite all of that odd circumstances, uh, Moses came out and he was um, taken to the palace by the princess and um, by the daughter of the Pharaoh and he had a very comfortable set life there. But in that comfortable and set life, Moses messed up. He, he killed a man with just one hit. But it took him a while. It took him that mess and into the desert journey for him to really understand what God really wanted to do with his life. Moses thought, yes, my people, the nation that I belong to, my people are in slavery and um, this is what God has in mind that yes he's brought me into the palace so that I can do something from within the palace to uh, bring the people out to bring the people out um, this is what God's plan is but that's not what God had in mind for Moses instead it took Mo he took Moses God took Moses out into the desert looking after the flock of his father-in-law for God to really encounter Moses. If you notice, there were two things that happened when Moses encountered God. Two things that God asked Moses to do. The first was to take his sandals off. Amen. And that signifies, Moses, so far the paths that you have treaded upon are no longer the paths that I that I am going to take you through. So God asked Moses to take his sandals off. Second, God asked Moses to put his stick down. That was his defense, that was his weapon, that was his tool. But God said, Moses, put that down because no longer are you going to have to defend yourself, but I am your defender. Amen. Today, those of you who are, who are listening to us today, I just want to give you a word of encouragement and say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are in a comfortable place, but you messed up there and you are finding it difficult now to find your place. Let me just encourage you and tell you, God is asking you to do two things. Take your sandals off because no longer are you going to tread upon the paths that you were used to but God is going to show you a new path to walk upon. Amen. And second, God is asking you to put what you are used to as your tool down, to put down what your defenses are because God is going to be your defense from now on. Amen. And the very place that Moses messed up in, God took him back. God took him back as a new man and used him to set the people of Israel free from the slavery of Egypt. Amen. The very place that you messed up in, the very place that you feel that you didn't meet the standards of the world in, God's going to take you back there if you are willing to submit today and make you a success story. Amen. As long as you are willing to take your sandals off and to put your stick down and trust in God because our God is great. There is no one like him. Amen. He's the one that turned the water into wine. Amen. The one that's going to turn your darkness into light. So just believe that today as you surrender to him, that he is going to show up as a great and mighty God in your life. Come on and let us worship our God together and let us just welcome his presence into our life and let us just see God work a miracle in your life and see that transformation that I believe the transformation that God brought in Moses' life, God is going to bring in your life today. So come on, let us just worship our God together. Amen. Lift your hands. 
your hands and just worship. strong God we serve. Amen. There's nothing that can stand against us if God is on our side because if he has opened a door for you, then no man can shut it. No force can shut it. Amen. Just sing the song. Allow his love to consume you from the inside out. 
allow his presence to just take over you from the inside out moses didn't have a superficial transformation he had an inside out transformation amen because an angry man and a man that was so filled with anger that with just one hit he was able to kill a man means just imagine what was going on inside of moses he relied so much on his own power to get things done but when he had an inside out transformation with that one encounter with god he was able to lead he was able to lead a group of people out of slavery that were full of murmurers and people who were so dissatisfied with how god was doing things here is moses that killed one man with one hit before his encounter with god and then there is this moses his inside out transformation after encountering god leading such a large group of people who could have overwhelmed him but because of his that one encounter with god that one inside out transformation moses led these people to the promised land amen today god is going to touch you not a superficial transformation not just a, not just in a way that that is just on the outside not just your finances or your family life but in a way that is going to be such a character transformation we believe for that in jesus name to sing this song you might have failed a thousand times you might have stumbled you might have just lost it all a lot of times but his grace is holding you together his mercy is holding you together amen his love is never ending and it is still chasing you down and he is calling you back and saying just submit just take your sandals off put your stick down and i am going to give you an inside out transformation Yeah. 
this is what God is telling you. The very same area that you are struggling in, God is going to bless you so that you can go back and pray for people in need, so that you can go back and bless someone in need, so that you can go back and buy someone some food because you know what it is like to not have that. Amen. What are, what are you struggling with? Is it your education that you are struggling with? Do you feel like no matter how well you study, no, ma no matter how much time you spend studying in, you just can't seem to be scoring good marks? But let me tell you, God is going to bless you. God is going to bring you out of that. God is going to use you so that you can pray for those in need, so that you can pray for students who are struggling with your education, so that you can pray for those students who are struggling and struggling but not get going and getting anywhere because you know what it feels like to not have it together amen ask for a Moses like transformation ask for an inside out transformation because I believe that today God is going to do a major character transformation in your lives you might not be meeting the standards of this world but I assure you you are meeting the standards of heaven amen don't worry about meeting the standards of this world just just focus just focus on surrendering yourself to God because the Holy Spirit is going to enable you he is going to enable you to meet the standards of heaven amen so let's just surrender surrender yourselves Father God, we thank you so much for encountering us today, Father God. We thank you so much for your presence in this place, Father God. We thank you that you are going to do an inside-out transformation, Father God. That there is going to be some Moses-like transformation in this place, Father God. Father God, that you are going to bring out people from areas of struggle, Father God, so that you can send them back to rescue people struggling in the same area, Father God. We thank you so much, Father God, for encountering our viewers, Father God. We thank you so much for, Father God, filling them with your presence so that they know that God is going to do something in their life, Father God. Father God, we submit the rest of the service into your mighty hands, Father God. We submit Pastor Gio, who's going to be uh, giving the sermon, Father God. Bless him and use him, Father God. Let him be a mighty weapon in your hand, Father God. Let his mouth be an instrument for you to speak through him, Father God. Lord, we once again just bless this meeting, Father God, and our viewers, Father God. Lord, just encounter them, bless them and touch them, Father God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us for this long. It was such an amazing presence of God encountering us and I believe that God is really going to do a transformation work in your lives today. Let us welcome our dear Pastor Gio who is going to be sharing the word with us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Master. Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I consider this as a great privilege and honor to stand and testify the greatness of God, the gospel of Jesus in this evening. I want to thank all the people who are joining this meeting from different parts of this country and uh, even outside the country through Zoom and Facebook right now. I thank the line of the band for leading the worship. It was indeed a great blessing and I personally could experience the presence of the Holy Spirit throughout the worship time. Thank you team for putting your effort for the glory of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless you richly. Let us turn our attention to the Word of God. For today's meditation, I would like to bring your attention to the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 4 to 8. Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 4 to 8. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. 
for without me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned if you abide in me and my words bad in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples praise the lord i hope the message or the passage that we have just gone through is pretty familiar to you and the message is simple to understand jesus talks to his disciples to abide in him to be abide in christ means to dwell in the presence of the god praise the lord jesus insists his disciples and instructs them to abide in him so that they can be fruitful well from the last sunday onwards pastor benjamin had started the new series about talking about the success so i i would like to connect this words to success and want to share the word of god as the holy spirit guides me i would like you to pray for me i would like to request you to pray for me so that the word of god may be revealed to you the holy spirit will talks to you so that the message will be useful for becoming more fruitful for the kingdom of god for the expansion of the evangelization across the nation praise the lord this is our intention through this meeting conducting through these online platforms available the medias to reach and reach to people and share the gospel and to let them know what the love of christ amen praise the lord and i indeed believe that the lord will help us those who have a good desire of preaching the gospel amen let us be in the presence of the lord with a prayerful attitude so that the spirit will take control and spirit will talk to you tonight hallelujah abide in me and be successful abide in me and be fruitful abide in me and be useful hallelujah this is what the content of the passage that we have just read abide in me and i in you praise the lord jesus clearly tells that unless you abide in me you can do nothing what does it mean if things that you are doing has to happen in a proper way and has to execute in a proper way and complete in a perfect way then you have to have jesus within you and the the way that you can have jesus within you is to be within him hallelujah is to have jesus within you is you to be within jesus abide in the word of god abide in christ therefore jesus can be within you and you will be fruitful and things that you do will be successful and it will be fruitful hallelujah as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine hallelujah we know how a fruit come out of a tree or of a plant the branches comes out of the stem of this plant and started the the fruit the the flowers start comes out few days later or after few days or maybe few weeks the fruits comes up suppose that particular branch has been cut down from that stem what do you think the fruit will be withered there will not be any fruit from that same way unless this branch is connected it cannot be fruitful the word of god clearly says that unless you have jesus within you you cannot be fruitful hallelujah you can be fruitful for the kingdom of god for the glory of god for the expansion of the kingdom of god in this earth 
only if you abide in Christ. So I would like to encourage you to attend to those words by saying you have to have Jesus within you. You have to have Christ-centered life in you. You have to follow a life which is after Christ's commandment. Praise the Lord. When we read the below portions of the, from, the, from the passage, he says that, I am the wine. Jesus compares himself or he says that I am the wine. He considers himself as the wine and we as the branches. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to really think about it, my dear friends. Are you really connected with Christ every time in your life? Suppose if you lost the connection between Christ, just like the uh, the branch has been cut down from the uh, tree, what is the hope of that branch? Nothing. It's not going to be the same as before. But nowadays we know that the crafting, the budding and a lot of the technologies has been in, in place in the agriculture world and we know clearly that there is possibilities that uh, crafting or uh, budding can be done so that we will get more fruits from that same tree or a plant. I just want to connect this with you. If you really connected with the, the true wine that is Jesus Christ, I assure you that you will be generating, you will be producing the fruits that the Lord Christ expects from you. Hallelujah. I hope the message is pretty clear to you. If you connect with Jesus, then the thoughts will be like Jesus. The approach will be like Jesus. The way of talk will be like Jesus. What is the first thing that we can think about? Jesus' lifestyle. His simplicity. His forgiveness. We know that uh, a certain lady who was captured in adultery has been brought before Jesus Christ. And Jesus was writing, kneeling down to the earth. And the people told that as per the law that has been given by Moses, this lady has to be stoned. And they had the stone to throw at her. But Jesus looked at them and said that, if anyone who has not seen in him, please throw the first stone upon her. But this is, this is what the fact that happened. Everyone has left from that place, from the elder to the younger, leaving the stones there. Finally, Jesus and this lady was left. Jesus has. No one has condemned you. Jesus said, I neither condemn you. I neither judge you. Go and do not sin anymore. This is what Jesus talks tonight. My dear friends, forget about the past. Maybe you are a great sinner. Maybe you never had experienced the love of Christ in your life. But there is a chance for you still tonight. Jesus with his tender mercy and his loving kindness and his beautiful calling. He calls you. Jesus calls you tonight to come to his place and be fruitful and to be connected with him. Praise the Lord. This is how Jesus told the lady that I do not judge you. I do not condemn you. I'm not going to uh, reward you according to what you have done. But I forgive you. I forgive your sins. Throughout his ministry, we can see that many times Jesus said, I forgive your sins. We know the paralyzed man who has been brought down into Jesus' seat, just before Jesus' seat, just in front of Jesus' seat. 
and uh, through through opening the roof of the house jesus looked at the faith of the people who has brought him to him and said to that person who was paralyzed that i have forgiven your sins praise the lord jesus stands to forgive your sins come unto jesus and be healed from all your sins hallelujah praise the lord well i do not fear satan but i fear to sin because jesus hates sin let me make it clear to you jesus loves the sinners to save them from their sins but jesus don't like a person keep on sinning amen i hope the message is pretty clear to you tonight jesus calls you again come on to me i will give you rest i will give you peace i will give you the forgiveness of your sin and bible it is written that by the blood of jesus we have the redemption from the sins hallelujah there is no other way but G as jesus said i am the way i am the truth and i am the life i am the true way to the life hallelujah i am the true way to the life jesus is the way for your answer hallelujah so my listeners tonight i want to encourage again saying that come to jesus and get connected with jesus so that you can be fruitful what jesus expects from you hallelujah you can read galatians chapter 23 and understand what are the fruits of the spirit you know and you can live according to the word of god and ensure that you're living according to the word of god and being fruitful as per the scripture says or the word of god says hallelujah as we read further it's pretty clear there that jesus not only speak about those who are being fruitful but also he speak about those who are not being fruitful the one that do not bear fruits the one that do not produce fruit what will happen to that branch if anyone does not the verse number 6 says if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and the and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt this is a clear warning from the word of god unless you bear fruits you are not going to be existing in the kingdom of god hallelujah when jesus saying this to nicodemus his disciple in the darkness or maybe this disciple who hi- comes hiding from others privately coming to jesus but jesus has the same message in public and in private that my dear brother my dear friend unless you are baptized unless you are born again by the water you are not going to enter into the kingdom of god hallelujah you have to born again not by the flesh not by the will of the flesh but by the will of the spirit of god hallelujah the the birth that the spirit of god advice is the birth through the waters hallelujah and of the spirit amen i want to encourage you to ensure that you are born again if you have not got a chance yet or if the message was not clear to you yet then this is the right time for you now is the time for ensuring your salvation hallelujah praise the lord we want to share the gospel of jesus jesus says that the time has come to an end therefore believe in gospel and be part of the kingdom of god in match chapter 1 we can clearly see that jesus comes and preaches the gospel now let's turn here the verse number 6 says that if anyone does not abide in me if anyone not continue to remain in me abide means continue to remain somewhere so if you have born again 
and if you have a real connection with Christ Jesus that you have to continue in that state being connected with Christ forever hallelujah let me move forward the six, verse number 6 again says that if anyone does not abide in me let's take an attention to what will happen to those who are not willing to get abide in Christ if somebody is not ready to get abide in Christ and if they are not fruitful what will happen to them jesus had this uh you know this had happened during the ministry of jesus that's written in mark chapter 11 verses 12 through 14 let's turn our attention to mark chapter 11 the gospel according to mark chapter 11 verses 12 to 14 let me read it for you now the next day when they had come out of uh, out from bethany he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it when he came to eat he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs in response the jesus said to it let no one eat fruit from you ever again and his disciples heard it praise the lord this is a familiar passage again jesus looks at a fig tree expecting some fruits from it but unfortunately he found nothing out of it and he says that in response to that he says that let no one eat fruit from you ever again there is an irony right it was not the season for fig tree or fig fruits that's clear in the word of god it was out of the season but jesus looking at the fig tree seeing the leaves in it he expected that there could be something in it because from far distance i can see that that fig tree has leaves in it praise the lord what does it shows when jesus when you when you when you, you need to realize, really relate this with your life okay i want to tell you clearly yes those who are listening to this very mom, to this words very moment now jesus the spirit of god talks to you clearly listen for a few minutes when jesus looks at you you have leaves the fullness the richness the completeness the blessings and everything that you need for your lifestyle and when jesus was so close to that fig tree and he was searching the fruits in it he searched fruit for a reason that he was hungry when jesus hungry and approached this fig tree the past this particular fig tree which had has which had the leaves in it So let me pause for a minute there and tell you one revelation there. Maybe it is out of season. Maybe it is a season of famine in the world around. Maybe it is a season of pandemic around the world. But still you say that I have nothing lost from me or I I want nothing because I have the fullness in my life. Thank you Lord for being so much kind kind to me. Yes, God is so good. but when jesus approached you suppose when jesus approached you do you really think that you will be bearing fruits for him my dear friends do not be like that praise the lord do not be deceived from the word of god The blessing that Jesus expects is you having fruit in you. Now let me tell you the other thing. It was out of the season. Why Jesus looks for fruits when it is out of season? When Jesus comes in you and when you connected with Jesus and you abide in Jesus, you will be fruitful 
doesn't matter whether it is out of season or it is a season of fruits hallelujah praise the lord when you are connected with jesus it doesn't matter whether it is season of fruits you will be bearing fruits for this is a word of god that's the assurance that i want to tell you and i want to share with you tonight praise the lord when you are connected and when you are abide in christ you will bear fruits even in the out of season suppose if the tree had no leaves suppose okay this is what i want to tell you the other angle of thinking the holy spirit guides me to say like this suppose the tree was without any leaves in it look into this okay let's put another fig tree next to that having no leaves so jesus cannot identify this fig tree which has no leaves in it from far distance suppose but as soon as he was because he was hungry and he approached the fig tree having leaves in it which could be identified from a long distance which has more visibility to many distance people knows this person people knows this fig tree it has all the branches in it it has all the leaves in it suppose a fig tree which is next to that having no leaves in it it is an out of season but still when jesus approached to that particular fig tree and found some fruits in it and he feeds himself he fills his stomach and he says wow it is an out of season having no leaves in it but still bearing fruit this is what i wanted to share you it doesn't matter you have nothing in your life you have not you do not have the abundance of riches in your life you do not have anything that you need to survive you may be going through a difficult trouble sometimes you may be going through emptiness you may be going through the situation of wilderness you may be going through the situation of dryness but still if you are connected and if you are abide in Christ i tell you one thing that you will be fruitful praise the lord you can be fruitful if you connected with Christ Jesus hallelujah so when we read further from that um, uh, same chapter mark chapter 11 verses 20 through the lesson of the withered fig tree is written there let's read that now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the root and peter remembering said to him rabbi look the fig tree which you cursed has withered away so jesus answered and said to them have faith in god for assuredly i say to you whoever says to his mountain this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says therefore i say to you whatever things you ask and you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them this was to encourage and to develop the faith in disciples jesus did this for developing the faith in jesus praise the lord i do want to encourage you to develop the faith in you lord in you in your heart my dear friends how much faith you have in your life you need to have faith which has value minimum 1 million dollar praise the lord you need to have a faith which has value minimum 1 million dollar if you have abundance of faith in your life you have you will have you will be lacking nothing in your life this is what i want to give you the assurance ask and it will be given to you provided you ask what god expects you to ask praise the lord it will be because i want to say from the 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 first verse that we have the passage that we have read john chapter 15 verses uh, 
uh, 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you now this is a very encouraging word and uh, every people will like it i'm sure that about that because if you ask anything to god and it will be given to you this uh, we, we all like right we all go to the temple or we all go to the uh, the churches and we pray to god to our own gods and we pray in our own words saying that lord give this thing god the, do this thing for me give me this thing give me that thing we expect that god will do this for you or we may think that only god can do this in your life and we expect god to do things in your life so from the word it's, it's clear that if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask that you desire and shall be done for you when jesus abides in you and the word of god abides in you you will ask only things that are meaningful to god you will ask you will desire only things that are expected by god from your life praise the lord you ask the nations i will give it to you 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 pray for india you ask for india you ask for europe you ask for any continent america or africa or australia it will be given to you for what for the glory of god that is what is written in the word of god verse number 8 says that this is my father by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit god will answer to your prayer provided you are going to be fruitful through that request praise the lord hallelujah being fruitful will make god glorified father will be glorified when you become fruitful when you bear much fruits so you will when you bear much fruits my father will be glorified so you will be my disciples that's the last uh, uh, words in that passage being my disciple being my disciple be fruitful being my disciple be successful hallelujah successful that's the topic right let me connect it with the words that we have read and the passage with that we have, we have gone through and the revelation that the holy spirit had given to us tonight being fruitful means being successful hallelujah if you plant a tree and you did everything that is needed for that tree or that plant it started growing every week every month you look for the growth in it and you see the growth is coming up it's became a big tree you waited for one year two year three year and many years but the fruit is not coming out what will happen I, i i'm sure that you will not wait for so long you have planted this tree to see the fruits in it to get the fruits from it and if the fruit is not coming out surely he will cut it down from the face of the earth my dear friends this is a warning for us if we are not bearing the fruits for christ we have no existence it is the assurance that the spirit of god lives in us the christ lives in us and we are living in christ that when you become fruitful praise the lord when you become fruitful it is play pretty clear to god christ everyone around you your friends your siblings your family your society that this man is really a christ focused man christ centered man because he is fruitful 
Now let's turn our attention to the great commission of Jesus Christ. It is written in um, Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 onwards. Let me read it for you. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus' great commission to his disciples. Go and make disciples. Produce disciples. Generate disciples. So when disciples getting generated, the word of God get fulfilled that you becoming fruitful for Christ. Praise the Lord. How a disciple, a true disciple only a true disciple can produce another disciple. Getting me? If you are not a true disciple, you cannot produce another disciple. Suppose, if Jesus being the master of this 12 disciples, they were following everywhere. They found nothing wrong in, his, in their master, Jesus Christ. And that's the reason they became true disciples. Let's focus our attention. Let's look into Jesus and become the real disciples, the true disciples, so that we can be bear, we can be we can bear fruits and become, you know, you know, producers of more uh, disciples. Praise the Lord. So, in the Great Commission, Jesus says that, Go therefore and make disciples all the all, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, a true disciple goes and shares the gospel. The Spirit of God transforms the hearts of those people who are listening to the gospel. Praise the Lord. They give their heart to Jesus and they take decision to take baptism. This is the reason that we are not seeing many baptism in all around the world. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that no baptism is happening, but it is happening through the true disciples of Christ. Praise the Lord. So, Think about yourself. You are, a dis are you a disciple of Christ so far? I know that I'm addressing a lot of people who have no idea about Jesus Christ probably. Maybe you have some idea about Jesus Christ. Maybe you know everything about Jesus Christ. But I want you to turn you to your life and think about it that whether you are fruitful, whether you are true disciple, whether you are successful. Think about it. If you are not successful, that means you are not connected with Christ anymore. What could be the root cause for any issues, any problems? In the technical terms, let me tell you, you know, in the IT world, if anyone, any IT engineers who are, look, you are listening to me I can catch up easily. But for any issue, there is a root cause. Unless you identify the real root cause and fix the issue from the root level, there is chance that this issue can occur again and again. A tactical fix may not help you for every time. You need to fix it strategically. Praise the Lord. Unless you fix the issue strategically, you are not going to be fruitful. 
Let me make it clear to you, my dear friends, those who are listening to these words tonight. The Spirit of God looks to you and says that if you do not abide in Christ, you are not going to be fruitful. If you are not abiding in Christ and not becoming fruitful for Christ, then you are not going to exist anymore. You will be withered. You will be cut down from the true vine. Hallelujah. Therefore, this is warning you have to accept this evening. You have to accept this evening, this warning that let's connect it with Christ forever. Let's not get disconnected from the love of Christ. Let's not stray from the presence of God. Praise the Lord. It's pretty clear from the life of the prodigal son. When he got back the, his sense, when he came back to his sense, he remembered many of the servants at his father's home wasting food after filling their stomach. And I'm here dying with, because of hunger. When the sense came back to him, I know all around the world, millions of youngsters, millions of people living without sense, without actual sense. They are living in the darkness of sin. They are living in the darkness of hell. But I want to tell you that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light in their life. I want, you to, call, I want to call you to the light of the eternal life. I want you to come to the life of lights. Praise the Lord. When Jesus comes in you, the darkness will go away. There is no room in your life when Jesus, the light of the world, comes in your life. Are you ready to invite Jesus to come into your life? Praise the Lord. When we read from Romans chapter 8, verses 25, let me bring your attention to Romans chapter 8 verses 35 All right It's written like this Who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Praise the Lord. My dear friends, when you come into the life of Christ, you may have to go through these situations in your life. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness. Peril, sword. Your life is under threat. You have no security for your life. But I'm sure one thing, that your life for eternal. Your life means your soul is completely secured in Christ Jesus. And no one can snatch your soul from the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. They may take out, they may cut, cut you down, just like Stephen, who was the first Christian martyr, who lost his life for the sake of Christ Jesus, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the evangelization, for the sake of the love of Christ. But from the heavens, Jesus stood and received his life. Who can separate us from the love of Christ tonight? If you, are, if you decide, if you take a decision tonight to get connected with Christ forever, I want to ask you, I want to ask to you tonight that who can separate you from the love of Christ? Who can come and snatch you or you? who can come and cut down you from the true one if you really decide to get connected with the true wine tonight. 
I know the Spirit of God talks to the people for surrendering their lives again. I know the Spirit of God talks to you tonight for a return back to your home, the eternal home. A call to come back to the presence of Christ Jesus. A cross, a call for sharing the gospel across the nation. A call to be a true disciple. A call to be fruitful. A call to be successful in your life. When you look into the life of Stephen, or if you look into the life of Paul, the world may say that it was an unsuccessful life. Stephen, after the first speech, a long chapter is completely filled of his speech. But what happened at the end? He lost his life. We can say that this guy was a successful person for Christ. He was a successful person for Christ because of that single matter. A number, millions of people have de- given their life to Christ. I tell you, from the history of 20 centuries all around the world, those who are preaching about Stephen and his life, he is saving thousands and thousands of people and they're saving them from the eternal perish or eternal death. Praise the Lord. When when we look into the life of Paul, many may say that this guy, guy has started as a ruler, having so much of power and authority. But look into his last few minutes or at the end of his life. He was put into the prison there he was waiting for Nero's condemnation and judgment. The king Nero had killed him. His herd was cut down. But do you think that the life of Paul the Apostle was a failure? Through the words that has been written through Paul the Apostle. Millions of people have been saved for Christ. Millions of people had entered into the kingdom of God because he said, for it is For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And to die is gain. I want to encourage you. To live is for Christ. And if that, it will be your gain. You are not going to lose anything in your life if you are ready to give your life for Christ. I am pretty sure that you will be saving your life. For Christ has given us that assurance. Let me conclude my words this evening. My, my dear friends who are listening to me this evening, who are listening to the Spirit of God this evening, I want to encourage you to become true disciple. I want you to, I want to encourage you to be successful in your life. I want to encourage you to be fruitful in your life. Abide in Christ. That's the way. Abide in Christ. That's the only way. Because if you are taking a decision to abide in Christ, Christ will abide in you. The word of God will abide in you. And you will be fruitful. And you will be a true disciple. And you will bring the glory to God for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I want to close this sermon this evening. I know that the Spirit of God clearly spoke to the people. It doesn't matter where you are listening these words from, this message from. It doesn't matter what time you are listening these words. Maybe you are going through a crucial situation in your life. But if you are taking a decision to come to Jesus Christ, Jesus has promised that I will give you peace and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus and be fruitful. Come to Jesus 
and become true disciple come to jesus and be successful may god bless you with this words amen amen Thank you so much Pastor Chiu. It was so amazing that the Holy Spirit was moving in such a powerful manner this evening that he was enlightening us to be abiding under the presence uh to be one with the with the wine the true wine Jesus and so that we can bear fruit so that we can be more fruitful uh so that the Holy Spirit may work in us the Holy Spirit may transform us inside out we might be fruitless at this very moment we might be utterly fruitless we might be feeling about ourselves that we are useless at this point of time but the holy spirit is telling us that i am going to change you inside out just like how god changed moses as pastor joe was preaching god was bringing into my heart the picture of onesimus who who was a slave and he was a thief and he stole from his master's house and one found fine day he ran away from there and when paul writes his letter to philemon he says he was not useless i beg your pardon he was useless he was not of any use either for you or for me but now he is coming back take him as a brother because he is now useful god has changed him come on it was a season of imprisonment it was a season of, of accusation it was a season of being messing around messed up life it was it was it was his his life was going from uphill to downhill from a slave he was a thief and then he was a prisoner his life he's not making any progress at that point of time in the season of his of his imprisonment god is transforming onesimus into someone who can be useful who can be useful for men who can be useful for his earthly master who can be useful for his heavenly master at this moment of time if you're ready to surrender if you're ready to follow jesus he says i am going to bring in a transformation and inside our trans- transformation i am going to make you bear fruit i am going to push you i am going to push you to success i am going to push you so that you will spread joy and life and salvation into the life of people who comes in contact with you how many of you are ready to surrender your life to jesus this evening as the holy spirit enlightened us to pass the deal are you ready to follow jesus if you're ready to follow jesus sing with us this chorus i have decided to follow jesus thank you jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back I have this 
wonderful moments that you've given us to experience you to know that you are so close to us that you are nowhere far away you are just an am stretched distance away from us that we can access you right now and we can tell you that we have decided to follow you that we can invite you into our lives so that you will come and transform us you will come and turn every badness every fruitlessness into fruitfulness so that you can be our God Father, I pray for the people who have taken the decision to follow you right now at this moment. People who have recommitted themselves to follow you right now. I pray that you will move in their lives in a powerful manner. That they will experience the manifestation of your glory in a powerful manner. That they have never, ever or experienced before. I pray that the Holy Spirit may move in their lives. Let heaven open for them. Let miracles happen for them. Oh, let the Red Sea part for them. Oh, In the name of Jesus, we bless them. Thank you for moving and making miracles happen in their lives, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you everyone for tuning with us and watching this live service this evening. See you next Sunday. Sorry, see you next Saturday at uh, the same time. God bless you. We love you. Amen. May the love of the Father, grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet coming of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. We love you. Jesus loves you. Amen.